everybody, it's your main man, Big Eye to Talk of the Town, Mr. DETV. And I'm here at the DETV studios once again with none other than Tony Yayo. That's right. Give it up. Thanks Give it up. Me. Thanks yeah, for having me. Now, now I'm telling you, I, I'm so excited because we get a phone call and and my man Dante. Where is Dante? Matter of fact, from Dante and Dante yeah, was like Dante and Jen. Oh. Yeah, Dante and Jen. They was like, yo, you gotta meet this brother. He's dynamic. He's inspirational. And but before we get started, uh -huh. uh, government. I want to get a government, but I'm gonna give the govern government. Oh yeah. Um, uh, no, Tony Yayo is an American <laughs> rapper. He is best known as one of the founding members of G Unit. I was gonna say it, but Definitely. I can't say it. G, -G, 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 -G Unit, yeah. uh, and a hip hop cool. group that formed with his childhood friends Fifty Cent and Lloyd Bank and Lloyd Banks. Right. Yayo released his first debut album only to sell 250,000 copies, making it number two on Billboard's Top 200 chart. Mm -hmm. How the heck did you do that? Um, It was all a dream. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're here. I get a chance, because I don't get much chance to, like, talk to kids and interact that much. Right. But this is, you know, with the Passport for the Future thing, like, I've been lucky. Right. You know, from my neighborhood, you know, I've seen people get shot, killed, you know, catch stupid cases. I caught myself a felony. Mm -hmm. And that's, I could tell the kids now, you don't want to catch a felony. I'm having a hard time getting in Canada right now. My paperwork just got approved. Now, now, now before, we, before we go into the felony, uh -huh. uh, and, and, and before we talk about um, the, the new nonprofit that, that you founded called Passport uh -huh. to the Future, right. let's talk about where you're from, okay. um, Queens, Queens, New York, right. and what was it like growing up? Because maybe that some of these kids can relate to some right. of the things that they see in, the, in, in, their, in their community. Well, South Jamaica, Queens, it, you know, as a kid, it was, it was kind of crazy. All our role models was really people that sold drugs. You know, I lived in Rochdale Village, so, you know, 50, he sold drugs at a young age at 12. I came outside about 15, but everybody in my neighborhood was like, just a drug dealer, there was no role models. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we was followers, right. you know what I mean? If, if my friend, I, I figure like this, this is how I look at kids and everybody. If you hang around a drug dealer, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be a drug dealer. If you hang around kids that's robbing people, nine times out of 10, you can rob people. Cause you know, in New York, the shooters and, 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 and the killers are getting younger and younger. Mm -hmm. 14, 15, you go to the Bronx and it's not really their fault, it's really the environment that they in. Right. So if we get a kid from Soundview Projects, you know, he might not be in a gang, but his friends might be in a gang, but he might be a target because somebody come through there and shoot the buildings up or whatever. Right. You know, so I'm just happy that I got to escape that. Right, right. You know, I've been through a lot. You know, my journey's been crazy. So if I could stop them from getting a felony or getting in trouble or being in jail for the rest of your life, because mm -hmm. you know, with the pressures of Instagram and all that now, it's just, it's like the world's getting crazier and crazier in my yeah. eyes with the youth. Right. So whatever we could do to kind of change it or help them, right. you know, that, that's, that's a good thing. Did you see a lot of, um, growing up, did you see a lot of kids like, you know, catch felonies and catch charges? Of course. And now, where, where are they? Yeah, you, you catch a felony, you can't, you catch a charge, you can't get a job. So if you want to work at Saks Fifth or certain, you know, probably, you know, a, a higher up job, it's going to be hard because you got that felony on your back. If I didn't have music, I would be jammed up. What right. I'll be doing, then once you catch that felony, you got no choice, but to, you ain't gonna get no job, so what you gonna go? Back to your same hustle, you gonna go back to selling drugs. Right. That's usually the cycle in the neighborhood. Right, you know? yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that cycle yeah. just goes over and over again, and you know, and a lot of kids today, they don't think that catching a charge, you know, they can easily get out. Once you're in that system, can you oh, talk man, about like- once you're in that system, like I think the worst thing I ever been through was Rikers Island. In, in New York, that's like one of the worst jails you could be in. It's called the home of the boldest. And like my first time going over the bridge, it's like a long bridge. It's bumpy. I was scared as hell. My first How time, I was probably like 17, 18. Mm -hmm. And I was like real scared to be on Rikers. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff your parents told you about. Like, yo, you don't want to come here because, you know, you go to Rikers, a lot of people's not coming home. They get killed up in there. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's. 
it's off the hook in there. Right. That's where you don't want to be there. Summertime, there's no AC. Wintertime, there's no heat. They're actually trying to close that jail down. Right. So those experiences, like, it's different. Like, I, I could tell you at first hand, I was a knucklehead. I got out of jail and went to jail the next day. Mm. So, you know, and, and it's nothing to glorify, right. but I look at all the stuff that I did when I was younger, like, yo, I was bugging. I was what were the, some of the things you was doing when you was younger? Just, my mom's a fine guns in the house. I had a Haitian parent, so my mom's just from the island. So, like, I, my mom's, a, she'll find everything. She'll find drugs, guns, she'll throw it in the garbage. I have to go get it left. <laughs> You know, my mom, she was not playing, you right. know, and I understood when my pops used to chase me off the block, I kind of got it later. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't understand at that point because I didn't care. Right. I was young, mm -hmm. dumb, didn't care. Right, right. You know, carrying a gun, I could have got killed, shot, anything. Right. 